Good morning and welcome to Lewisburg United Methodist Church. You made it out even in the rain. That is a special, I think you get a special star or something today for making it. We're glad that you're here and we're also glad for our friends that are online. I want to give you a couple of announcements. Next Sunday, right after worship, we are having a spring salad lunch. That means that you're bringing food that is saladish. So we're going to play a quick family feud. Tell me some names of different salads that some people can bring. Go. Good. Toss salad. What else? Caesar salad. Macaroni salad. Broccoli salad. Potato salad. What'd you say? Egg salad. All right. Chicken salad. See, fruit salad. Oh gosh, we could just go on and on. So you just bring a salad with you. That way we don't have to heat it up or, or it's not complicated to bring with you. And we'll just go down after worship to have some time to get to know our faces and, and know some new faces and um, just have fellowship around the table. So we hope you'll come stay after worship next Sunday. The Women's Connect group started Monday, but it's not too late if you are one of our women or girl women teens, you are still welcome to come. We had over 40 women come and it was just a sweet time of Bible study and then we break into small groups to get to know one another. So we hope you'll come. Um, it was well attended and we want that good energy to keep happening. We're going to stand and greet one another and if you'll just look at someone and say, God be with you. Let's stand together. together he's got the whole world in his hands As we call our hearts to worship, I'm going to ask that you simply respond as a reminder to your own faith and to the faith of those around you. Simply respond by saying, God is always with me. Are you ready? Where is God as we enter worship? God is always with me. Where is God as we go along our way? God is always with me. Where is God when we are in the depths of despair? God is always with me. Where is God when we are on the mountaintop of joy and confidence? God is always with me. Where is God when I've missed the mark, when I have failed, when I stand in broken rubble? God is always with me. Where is God through every part of your life story? God is always with me. Amen. I'm going to ask that the children come forward for some children's time. And as they are coming, start collecting your change and the noisy offerings because we'll be passing those to the center in a moment.
Have any of you ever played the game hide and seek? It is one of my favorite games. So here's how we're going to play. You can only hide in the front area. You can hide over in that area where those old pianos are sitting right there. You can hide anywhere in here, or you can hide over in the choir area. Grace is here because she's really good at this game, and if you need help hiding, she knows some good secret spots if you're not sure where to go. So I'm only going to count to 30, and as I count to 30, y'all need to go hide. Are you ready? Get set, go. I might have to help you. Now, we've got to stay in the front area. Good. Go that way. Go, go hide. One, two, three. Go get them. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. How long did I say I was going to count? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Ready or not, here I come. When I find you, then you have to come back to where we were sitting. Okay. Oh, my golly. This might be more complicated than I thought. <laughs> I see organ friends. Come on. Are they all back there? Okay. Okay. I think I found everybody. Did I find everybody? Oh. Oh my golly, I gotta go find Solomon. You're gonna have to help me. <gasps> There's Emily, good one. <gasps> there, I see you. Come on, come on. Do we got everybody? Oh my golly, that's enough, right? It's plenty. No. There's another one. That's not part of the place where you're supposed to hide. <laughs> okay. Come on out, sweet friend. I see you under there with your little cute flip flops. Oh my goodness. Well, here's the, here's the obvious point. I am not that great at finding y'all. I gave up really easy, didn't I? All of a sudden thought, well, I think I found enough kids. Thank goodness our God is the best at hide and seek. And he never, never stops looking for us. He always knows where we are. I'm going to read you our Bible verse for the day. One time this fellow says, God, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee to get away from your presence. If I go to heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, you're there. If I settle on the far side of the sea, you are there. You know what that means? That means God is the very best at hide and seek. He knows where we are and he is always with us. Really quickly, Pat, call out some places that you go to often. Maybe every week you go there. Where is it? Grandma's house, God is always with you. School, God is always with you. Where else? Lunch, God is always with you. Any other ideas? Recess, God is always with you. Anybody else have an idea? Well, we're going to... Home, God is always with you. We're going to thank God that no matter where we go, even if we try to hide, he is always with us. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that no matter where we go, you are with us. Whether we're at home or school or lunch or recess, you are always there. So walk with us now, we pray, as we leave this place, that you go with us no matter where we go all week long. Amen. Okay, let's go collect the noisy offering. Grace is going to help you.
can't shake these lies that keep running around in my head. What if I saw me the way that you see me? What if I believed it was true? What if I traded the shame and self-hatred for a chance at believing? mother's womb and you say that I've never been hidden from you and you say that I'm wonderfully wonderfully made you search me and know me you know when I sit when I rise so you must know the choices I've made and the pain that I hide. What if I saw me the way that you see me? What if I believed it was true? What if I traded the shame and self-hatred for a chance at believing? mother's womb and you say that I've never been hidden from you and say that I'm wonderfully wonderfully made and your eyes they've seen me before I was born and you know all the good things that you made me for Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. This morning's reading is Psalm 139, verses 5 through 10. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you have a bulletin, you're going to need it this morning because you're going to help me with these thought jots. We have little thoughts. They're listed on the side of your, of your bulletin, and it kind of guides us through as we explore this passage together. So I'm going to start off by asking you, what? What is it that we're talking about? Let's see the screen. There you go. What is it? God is always with me, always. You know, we started this new series about being wonderfully made, and last week we sort of explored this idea that we have a God who is omniscient. That's a real fancy word that means God knows all. 
He knows everything about you. He knows everything about your heart and your mind. Today, our fancy word is omnipresent. Anybody know what that one means? God is everywhere. You know, during this time when this psalm was written, it was common for people to call God my Ebenezer and my Jehovah Jireh. Now, to be honest, we don't really use those words a lot, not even in worship. We don't pray and ask God to be our Ebenezer or call him our Jehovah Jireh. So let me remind you what that is. Ebenezer means that the Lord has helped us this far. In other words, when you look back on your life story so far, you can see over and over and over again how God showed up for you, how he was faithful to you. He is your Ebenezer. If you call him your Jehovah Jireh, that means that you believe and have confidence that our Lord will see to it. He will provide. He will make a way. You know, I don't know where you are on your spiritual journey, but it might be interesting this week to practice praying to either Ebenezer or Jehovah Jireh. Maybe you're in a season of your faith where you want to be reminded how God has been faithful to you, or there's parts of your past that are difficult that it's hard for you to let go of, cry out to Ebenezer, who is with you. Or maybe you want to pray to Jehovah Jireh, which is a reminder that he is with you in your anxious thoughts as you think about what's coming, what's going to happen, what's happening in my life story. I love this passage because it sort of explains to us how he can be both. What does your how thought jot say? Read it to me. I love this concept that our God says, it says, you are before me and you are behind me and you lay your hand upon me. Don't you love that? That we have a God that goes before you, but he also comes behind you. You are hemmed in. You know what it makes me think of? Clean sheets. I love when there's clean sheets on my bed. There's just something about crawling in those cozy sheets when you know they're clean and smell so good and crisp, that kind of being tucked in, I think is what it feels like to be hemmed in by God. And I have a really important question for you. When you tuck yourself in at night, do you stay tucked in or do you kick one leg out? Okay, let's take a survey. I stay tucked in all night. Raise your hand. Okay, I kick a leg out. Oh, we have more leg kickers. You know what's so neat is the reason that you're able to even kick your leg out is because you feel safe and secure and cozy and hemmed in. That's what our God does for us. He's before us, he's behind us, and he lays his hand upon us. I was thinking about when I was a little girl, my mom said that I was always, out of the six kids, the first to go to bed. You know, that's still true in my household. I just love going to bed. I, 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 I love that quiet, shut down my mind and get cozy in my covers. I remember as a little girl, I would hear my family still chattering. I could still hear them laughing and talking in the kitchen. And I would leave my bedroom door open because it just felt safe and secure. That's how God wants you to feel. That he has hemmed you in, that he speaks over your hearts and that he holds you. I started thinking about this concept all week about being hemmed in, and I kind of had flashbacks to other passages of of Scripture where it talks about being hemmed. Remember the prophet named Isaiah? In Isaiah 6, he says that he had this moment where he really got to see God, and this is what he says. I saw the Lord, and he was high and exalted. I saw him seated on a throne, and the hem of his garment, just the train of his robe filled the entire temple. Do you see how big our God is? I want you to kind of look up for a minute and imagine that only the hem of his garment, only the little end of God's robe, it would fill this entire sanctuary. That's the God who has power and might and is able, that he's so big, so strong, and so able. But then I thought about another story about a hymn. Remember the woman who had heard of Jesus and she was struggling with a physical condition that was plaguing her and she knew Jesus could help her. And so she goes up to Jesus and maybe you remember the story. She reaches out and simply touches touches the hem of his garment, simply touches his clothes. Here's what she said. If I may just touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. 
And straight away, after she touched his clothes, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing that the power had gone out of him, he turned to her and he said, Who has touched my clothes? See, what I love about these two passages is that you get to explore that you have an awesome and mighty God whose hem of his garment would fill the sanctuary, but he's also approachable. That a woman who was in great need, who didn't even know for sure how to find healing, just touched his clothes and they made a relationship connection. How is it that our God can be cozy and safe, but also powerful and unimaginably mighty? How do we have a God who can be both? None of us know. In fact, the passage from Psalm 139 says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too lofty for me to attain. You know, I shared with you that I went to the monastery um, a week before, and you get to speak during counseling only. So you make an appointment to see a monk. And one of the things we got talking about was, as I was talking about my doubts of God, even though I'm in ministry and I'm a strong believer, I have moments where I don't understand him. Or some of these parts of faith just don't make sense to me. And, And I was grateful for his gift of grace because this is what he said. He said, no one, no human ever has a perfect picture or image of God. And no picture that you create of God within your heart is ever permanent. You grow, you learn, you stumble. No human knows of all who, all who he is, not even ministers, not even monks. No one in this sanctuary possesses everything there is to know about our God. And aren't you glad? I want the God who I serve to be so awesome that only the hem of his garment fits in our sanctuary. Our next question is, where? Tell me where. The passage says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, you are there. You know, I get excited about creative camp every year. It's in June, and we usually have about 150 students that come and worship in this sanctuary and spend a week learning about the love of God. This year, our theme is space, outer space, the heavens, the universe. And then you're thinking, well, what Bible verse are you going to use about planets and space? We're going to talk to the children about how God's love is beyond, that our hope in God is beyond even understanding I get excited about getting to share with kids that our God is so awesome that even if you went to outer space, he would be with you. Heavens and the depths. I wonder if this passage talking about heaven, that he's with you in heaven and he's with you in the depths, if it could also maybe mean in my highs and in my lows. I wonder if it also means that in those parts of your life story where things were great, he walked with you. And in the times when you felt like you weren't sure you could get up again, that he was with you. I think it's an important time to address an age-old theology question that some of you may have even struggled with. Once I say yes to Christ, once I say yes to him, is our relationship forever, no matter what ends up happening in my story, even the choices that I make, Can I slip through his hand of grace? I'm going to let Romans chapter 8, verse 33 answer that question for you if you've ever had that question. Romans 8 says, Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Who can bring any charge against you who God has chosen and who you have chosen? Then he asked this question, Who on this earth can condemn you? It is our God who justifies, Romans says. Christ Jesus, who died, but more than that, he was raised to life. And he's at the right hand of God, and he is also interceding for you. There's your answer. Our God has already done the redeeming work. Salvation is about God's redeeming love and his redeeming work, not yours. 
So when you get it wrong and you miss the mark and you make choices that are not the best and not God's best, we have a God who has already taken care of that. It's not your work to be done. Remember the last words that Jesus said on the cross? He was hanging there, and it was kind of one of his last few words. He said, it is finished. Now, let's let that pour over us. He has already done what needs to be done so that you might be in relationship with him always. You know, he doesn't ever say, that as he's hanging on the cross, it doesn't say, it is almost finished if you help me. He does not say, we will finish this together if we work hard. He does not say, you can do it alongside me. No, you know what he says? It is finished. I have done the redeeming work. That word in Romans that's um, justified, that God has justified you. I love to remind you what justified means because it's kind of a big theology word. It means just as if I did. Justified is just as if I did something. To win God's favor. He loves me just as if I did something to earn it. He loves me so much, it's just as if I made a sacrifice big enough to connect me with the maker of this world. Just as if I did anything to make myself right with God. I was asked by someone recently who sees really hard things in their career. <clears throat> this person was struggling because this person sees every day on a daily basis the darkest of dark. They see abusers. They see people that have caused trauma to others. And she struggled with, what about them? There's no way, she said, that I can see them in heaven. There's no way with that kind of choice, with that kind of darkness, that they could still be in the realm of God's love and grace. How will they be in the presence of God in heaven? And I told her, you're right. They won't be there because God cast to hell every sin. He cast to hell every dark oppression. Any horrific deed you can think of, any trauma that you can imagine, God will cast it all to hell. And the person that stands before him is his precious child, the inner person. No sin, no darkness, no horrific deed will be in heaven we will all be made new. And the only thing that will be standing in the presence of God is our true self, our soul self, our inner self, your true identity, which is a child of God. Remember the woman who was in great need of Jesus? She touched his garment because why? Because she knew he would be able to make her whole. So all the things that make us unwhole, unhealthy, Trauma and darkness will not be there. And aren't you glad? No one can get away from God. Even when we try to hold him at a distance, even if you've gone through parts of your faith journey like I have where I literally denied him or just didn't spend time with him or ignored him or ran from him, even during those times, our God finds us. So the next question is, when? Tell me when. Even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. I love that. Even there in the hard parts, in the lonely parts, in the lost my ways parts, in the frightening parts, in the trauma parts, even there our God is with us. I wonder if any of you have ever felt like an outsider, ever felt like you might not be in the realm of God's grace. Have you ever felt like maybe a refugee? You know, we've been sharing these, um, he gets us. It's a modern parable commercials that are being um, put on live TV. Watch this one and see if you can relate to feeling like they did. There was a mother and a father who had a son. They lived in a small village and didn't have much money, but they were happy. One day, they heard the head of their country was sending soldiers to their town because he thought they were part of an insurrection. The young family decided to flee. They grabbed only what they could carry and ran. They hiked for days, wondering if soldiers might still be following them. 
They were scared, hungry, and exhausted. But they were far away from the atrocities taking place in Bethlehem. That's all Mary and Joseph wanted, a safe place to call home. Our final question is why? Because he said so. You ever heard that one before from a parent? Because I said so. See, our God is who he is. He's not like a loving God who tries to love you as best he can and, and tries to share some love. He is love. He is our redeemer, which means he literally bought you back from a world that tried to possess you from darkness that tried to capture you, from hard things that try to hold you. He is your redeemer. He has bought you back. Deliverance, freedom. During our prayer song that we're getting ready to enter, you are welcome to light candles or use the altar. But I want you to hear the words of this song. It says, all these pieces, broken and scattered, in mercy he gathered, mended and whole. Empty-handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free. I've been set free. Take some time to center yourselves. All these pieces, broken and scattered, he gathered, mended and whole, empty-handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free, I've been set free. Amazing grace, how sweet.
prayers are asked this morning for Martha Miller, who has been hospitalized for a heart attack and recent hip surgery, and also for her daughter, Carol. Mary Ramsey for eyeball problems, for Georgia Smalley, for Tina Tuckwiller's family, Al Petrie, Jim Childers, and Don Seibold for Kathy Dolan McMillian, who is traveling to Pittsburgh for evaluation for a possible lung transplant. Continuing prayers for Kevin McMillian as he continues to work through depression. Continued prayers for Diane Weeford. Healing requested for Arletta Jackson. Prayers for Judith Jared's neighbor, who is getting a biopsy this week and all of those unspoken prayers in the sanctuary and online. Our Ebenezer, you have walked with us this far. And Jehovah Jireh, you'll keep walking as we enter whatever is next. Help us trust you. Help us trade our doubts and insecurity for your presence. Remind our spirits this morning that you are always with us. No matter where we go or what we face, your presence will be enough. So we lift up those with broken hearts or broken bodies or broken minds. We ask God for wholeness, for healing, for your presence to fill all the parts that feel cracked. In Jesus' name. bulletin. What were we talking about today? Read it to me. God is always with me, always. How? Hemmed in. Where? When? Why? That is the truth that we as believers stand on. Let's stand together for our closing benediction of he's got the whole world in in his hands. Lewisburg United Methodist Church is a vibrant church full of life-giving ministries, and we're glad you're part of it. If you're part of our online church family, we want to let you know there are ways you can give. You can give in person here in the sanctuary or in the church office. You can mail it to P.O. Box 69 Lewisburg, or you can give online through Facebook and through our webpage. We just want to thank you for your continued faithful giving so that the ministries of Lewisburg United Methodist may continue to grow and thrive.